Read the Bible every day so you'll be full of faith. Welcome you to join Bible Race to read the entire Bible in two years. I believe God will bless you, He will lift you up, and your life will never be the same. The Book of Judges, Chapter 11 Jephthah delivers Israel. Now, Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute. Gilead was the father of Jephthah, and Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when his son's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah flee from his brothers and live in the land of Tob, and worthless fellows collected around Jephthah and went out with him. After a time, the Ammonites made war against Israel, and when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob, and they said to Jephthah, Come and be our leader, that we may fight against the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, That is why we have turned to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the Ammonites and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head. And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord will be witness between us, if we do not do as you say. So Jephthah went with the leaders, the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and leader over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the king of of the Ammonites and said, What do you have against me that you have come to me to fight against my land? And the king of Ammonites answered the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel, on coming up with, from Egypt, took away my land from the Anon to the Jabba and to the Jordan. Now, therefore, restore it peacefully. And Jephthah again sent messengers to the king of Ammonites and said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab or the land of Ammonites, but when they came up from Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Israel sent then sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please let us pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not listen. And they sent also to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained at Kadesh. Then they journeyed through the wilderness and went around the land of Edom and land of Moab and arrived on the east side of the land of Moab and camped on the other side of Anon. But they did not enter the ter territory of Moab, for the Anon was the boundary of Moab. Israel then sent messengers to Sion, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land to our country. But Sion did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sion gathered all his people together and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. And the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated them. So Israel took possession of all the land of the Amorites who inhabited the country. And they took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Anon to the Jabba and from the wilderness to the Jordan. So then the Lord, the God of Israel, is possessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And are you to take possession of them? Will you not possess that Chemosh or your God gives you to possess? And all that the Lord our God has dispossessed before us, we will possess. Now, are you any better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever contend against Israel? Or did he ever go to war with them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages, 
and in Arnier and its villages and in all the cities that are on the banks of Arnon 300 years. Why did you not deliver them within that time? I therefore have not sinned against you, and you do me wrong by making war on me. The Lord, the judge, decide to stay between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the Amorite, Ammonites did not listen to the words of Jephthah that he sent to him. Jephthah's tragic vow. Then the spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and passed on to Mizpah and Gilead, and the and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed on to the among Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, "If you will give." the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out from the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonite shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah crossed over to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord gave them into his hand, and he struck them from Aronir to the neighborhood of Minith, twenty cities and as far as Abel Karamin with a great blow, so that Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. And Jephthah came to his home at Mizpah, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. She was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. And as soon as he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you have become the cause of great trouble for, to me, for I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot take back my vow. And she said to him, My father, you have opened your mouth to the Lord. Do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, now that the Lord has avenged you on your enemies, on the Ammonites. So she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Leave me alone two months, that I may go up and down on the mountain and weep for my virginity, I and my companions. So he said, Go. Then he sent her away for two months, and she departed, she and her companions, and wept for her virginity on the mountains. And at the end of the two months, she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow that he had made. She had never known a man, and it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went year by year to Laman, the daughter of Jepha, the Gileadite, four days in a year. Chapter 12 Jephthah's conflict with Ephraim. The men of Ephraim were called to arms, and they crossed to Saphon and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross over to fight against the Ammonites and did not call us to go with you? We will burn your house over you with fire. And Jephthah said to them, I and my people had a great dispute with the Ammonites, and when I call you, you did not save me from their land. And when I saw that you would not save me, I took my life in my hand and crossed over against the Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead struck Ephraim because they said, You are fugitives of Ephraim, you Gileadites. In the midst of Ephraim and Manasseh, and the Gileadites captured the forts of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. And when any of the fugitives of Ephraim said, Let me go over, the men of Gilead said to him, Are you an Ephraimite? When he said, No, they said to him, Then say, Shubaleth. And he said, Sibaleth for he could not pronounce it right. Then they seized him and slaughtered him at the forts of the Jordan. At that time, 42,000 of the Ephraimites fell. Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite 
died and was buried in his city in Gilead. After him, Ibsan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters he gave in marriage outside his clan, and 30 daughters he brought in from outside for his sons, and he judged Israel seven years. Then Ibsan died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon, the Zebulonite, judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. Then Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried at Ajalon in the land of Zebulun. After him, Abdon, the son of Hanal, the Paradonite, judged Israel. He had forty sons and thirty grandsons, who rode on seventy donkey, and he judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hanal, the Paradonite, died and was buried at Paradon in the land of Ephraim, in the hill country of Amalekites. Amen. Following is the English translation of Pastor Mong Wu's teaching on the book of Judges, chapter 11 to 12, translated by Ray. Read the Bible every day so you will be full of faith. Judges chapter 11 to 12 is talking about Judges Jephthah. So Jephthah is the shortest judges out of the 12 judges. He only judged Israel for six years and his upbringing is not very good. He is actually the children of a prostitute. But in the book of Hebrew, it recorded that he is one of the mighty men of faith. So through reading Jephthah, we can see how a person with this shortcoming who is incomplete, but because of his faith, how can God use him? Just like Gideon, and he has this faith towards God, but also has their sh shortcoming. And then Gideon uh, let the entire Israelites be fall into sin. But also in the uh, record of the 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 hero of faith in the book of Hebrew, it also recorded the name of Gideon and same for Jephthah. So through these two judges, we can see that, Lord, today I really want to be used by you. I want to use my gift to build up your church. But Lord, may you also help me that it's not just your spirit come upon me so that I can fulfill the requirement of the serving, but may your spirit really fill me and rule over me so that Holy Spirit can always overflow. Let me always live in, abide in the Holy Spirit so that not only I have this ability to serve, but I can bear fruit of life. So as we are reading the book of Judge, we need to have this new perspective to see that God can use those judges, but also God is reminding us that their shortcoming in their life, we as a New Testament Christians, how can we deal with them so that we can always abide in God's light? How can we learn to serve in humility so that we can avoid all the horrible consequences of those judges? So for Gideon, his mistake caused his descendants to all live in sin. So today we can also pray that Lord may my serving to be able to bless my children rather than let my children experience the terrible consequences because of my shortcoming, because of my flesh, because of my uh, impatience. Well, when we are reading Jephthah, we can see that even though Jephthah, he's full of faith and passion, he's willing to offer up sacrifice for the Lord, but because he's not clear about God's truth, so he foolish vow so that he doesn't have any children. And he only judged Israel for six years. So one is Gideon, he has a lot of children, but they kill one another and they live in sin. And the other one, Jephthah, he doesn't have any children because he made this foolish vow. He doesn't know, understand truth. So his daughter died unmarried. So these two stories to tell us that as we are reading the book of Judges, we need to ask God that, Lord, may I always live in front of you and my children also live in front of you so that our entire family line can abide in your victory, glory, and grace and abide in this path leading to the tree of life. Otherwise, we will really be like in the book of Judges. Many second, third, fourth generation Christians, not only do they lose their faith, but they even sin against God. Some terrible, even more terrible sin than unbelievers. So may the Lord also bless us and have mercy on us to serve, to protect our serving and also strengthen our children. So back to Jephthah, verse 1 to 3, talk about his upbringing. He was the son of prostitute, but Bible says that he is a mighty, mighty warrior. This is actually the same description as the Gideon. He was born in Gilead, but he was not accepted by the Gileadites and even said that you don't have the right to receive the inheritance. Actually, in the Deuteronomy, it says that even though they are, uh, even for the son of prostitute, they still have this opportunity 
ability to receive their inheritance. So here the Gilead died, they are intentionally excluding his right to receive the inheritance. So that's why he need to run away. So he went to the land of Tub and worthless fellows collected around Jephthah and went out with him. So here these worthless fellow, they are not talking, it's not uh, talking about gangster, but here in the Bible, it's talking about people who doesn't have anything so that they can only help each other. They dwell in this uh, land and then maybe they are a bunch of homeless person. They lose their family, they lose their inheritance, and they lose their marriage. And next from verse 4 to verse 10, it follows chapter 10. After the time, the Ammonites made war against Israel and they're trying to find a leader and they can't find it. So they eventually have to go to Jephthah. And in verse six, it says, come and be our leader, please, please, please. And but Jephthah said, did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? And next in verse eight, and the lead elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, okay, so now I, we will not just want you to be our leader, but now you can even be our head. We will not just have you to be our commander. Now you can be our king. You can come rule over us. Then Jephthah said, yes, but next you see in verse 9, the elder says, that is why we have turned to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the Ammonites. And Jephthah said, if the Lord gave them over to me, I will be your head. So you can see that Jephthah, he's not very certain, but he says, if the Lord helped me, then I know that this is a confirmation from the Lord, so I will be your head. But what did the elder say? The elder says, the Lord will be witness between us if we do not do as you say. So basically, the elder, they just care about those things. They said, as long as we can solve the problem, then I, we will just treat you as a leader already. So basically, the elder, they just want to solve the problem ASAP. Even though Jephthah is the son of the prostitute, but you can see that this young man, he is always seeking God. It's, so it's not about your upbringing. It's not about like whether or not you have a degree. Maybe you grew up in the poor family, or maybe you are very inexperienced, and maybe your past uh, history is has a lot of trouble. But as long as you are determined to follow God, respond to the Lord, you honor God, you don't complain, you don't criticize, and you don't try to hide your past, the past of the darkness, of frustration, of failure, and pain. But instead, you really believe that God has this gracious will through everything that I have experienced in the past. And you will found that God will really guide you. He will bless you. He will promote you. So why do we say that? Because in throughout the entire chapter 11, you will see that from the word of the elder to Jephthah, they are actually the same thing for the people who are trying to speak to, when they're trying to ask God. They just want God to, they just want to use God to solve their problem. Come and help me. Then I'll let you be the leader, be the commander, be the head, whatever thing as long as you can solve my problem, whatever you says, I will say yes. It's like that. So what Jephthah he's experiencing is actually the same thing, uh, same thing between the relationship between God and Israelites. So the elders, they are so urgently, pressingly want to solve this problem and just say, yeah, 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 you will be my king, be our leader, be our head. But later on, they also despise him. They hate Jephthah. So this is basically the same way as how Israelite treated God. Come, 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 God, come save me, help me, solve my problem problem. Come uh, drive away the enemies. But after the nation had enjoyed peace for a number of years, then they reject God again, and they want God to leave their life. So what Jephthah experienced is basically what God experienced. So sometimes we will fill up what is lacking in Christ's affliction in our affliction. Maybe we very eagerly seek the Lord. We are so hungry to serve God, and then we encounter some difficulties. Maybe there will be something really heartbreaking, or we will have have some tension in our uh, friendship or with our family, but you should not complain. You shouldn't criticize those people and say, ah, oh, these people, how can they forsake me like this? But no, you, we should know that we are walking on the same path as Jesus Christ, that we are filled up what is lacking in Christ's affliction. And we can see that in all these experiences, we can learn to know and touch God's heart more and more, rather than just keep asking God to solve our problem, just like the elders are utilizing Jesus Today, many people are also utilizing God. This is what Jephthah is experiencing. It's basically what God has been experiencing. And next, in verse 11, Jephthah, he went back. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mitzpah. And from verse 9 to 11, you will find that when Jephthah is speaking, he's always talking about God, talking about the Lord. It's very different from chapter 9 and 10. 
uh, remember Gideon's son Abimelech, and all these things. He never talk about God. There is no God's mention. No God, as if there is no God's existence. Even though Shechem is actually the city of refuge for the Levites, but he didn't mention about it. And eventually, these out of these six city of refuge, they lost one of them because the middle Israelites they don't want God. So now they lose their、uh, city of refuge in the middle part of the land, and but now Jephtha he wants God, so he keep proclaiming God's name and all the things he lay out in front of God. So you can see that even though he has a lot of shortcoming, even though he's rejected by people. Uh, his faithfulness to the Lord, even though he's incomplete, but God still used him. So today we can also imitate Jephthah, his passion towards the Lord. And so today God will definitely come and save us. He will help us to get rid of all the past, to win over, to restore us from the past injury and hurt. He will restore. He will heal us as long as we keep seeking God and know God and seek His truth and love His word. Then, then we will not. Have to experience the same pain as Jephtha, and we will not have to make the same mistake as Jephtha has made. And next, from verse twelve to twenty-eight, Jephtha,、uh, he sent messengers to question the Ammonites for two times. So please don't overlook these passages. You can really see that Jephtha, he really understand the history in the Old Testament as he is reading that the Ammonites will say, "Oh, we are going to take back our land. We are not trying to occupy the Israelites, but we are taking back our." Our lands, but Jephtha is really familiar with the history, so he know that hey, we didn't take over your land. Previously, you Ammonites and the Moabites, you lost the battle. To Og, the king of Bashan, so and later on, we Israelites we conquer Og,、uh, the Og king of Bashan. So this land becomes the land of the. The east tribe, the two and a half tribe on the east bank of the、uh, river of Jordan. So today, these lands, like on the east side of the Jordan River, and also the land in the south, we obtain them through our warfare, through battle, and all these things happens after three hundred years when your land was being occupied by other people. How can you now ask me to take back the land and say and? And saying that we Israelites has occupied your land, so you can see that Jephthah he is so familiar with God's word, and also he do things according to what God has requested in Deuteronomy in Numbers, saying that before you fight the battle, you have these two negotiation. He's trying to ask them, hoping that they can just retreat. So don't despise Jephthah just because he is the son of a prostitute. You know, many people reject him, and then he spend time with all those worthless people. But through these Conversation. You can see that Jephthah he is very familiar with the Torah, and he definitely really loved Torah, and he really know the entire process of how Joshua fight the battle. And、so、he is definitely spend time to listen to every single word in Torah. So this is actually very. Commendable because at that time it's not like oh you have a Bible you can just pick it up and read it but you have to listen and listen all the time to go listen to when the Levites they are preaching when they are proclaiming God's word to you need to go listen to Levites when they are. Teaching about God's law, so Jephtha he is this kind of people. Even though he's the son of the prostitute, even though he's rejected by the family, saying that you cannot receive the inheritance, but he is so passionate about God's word. He know God's way. He know God's law, and he's very passionate about it. He is zealous of God's word. So from verse twelve to twenty eight, you can see that throughout the conversation, he just keep talking about the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. And next, he make this vow in verse twenty nine. Then the spirit of the Lord was upon Jephtha. Verse thirty, and Jephtha made a vow to the Lord and said, "If you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out from the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonites shall be the Lord." And the next sentence is more horrible, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So that means you can see that he has this zeal for God's word. He know the history, but he did not touch God's heart. He do the entire. Teaching of the law, the essence of all law. God is not up to the burnt offering. All the sacrifices is intended to bring people closer to God. So today, Jephtha has this zeal and passion. He honor God. He is willing to commit and help the Gileadite to fight the Ammonites. And but throughout the entire process of the warfare, even though the spirit of God is on him, but he's make this mistake. He's make this foolish vow. 
And so no wonder after he had the victory, when the Ammonites was being conquered by Israelites, then Jephthah came back to his home at Mitzpah, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. She was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you have become the cause of great trouble to me, for I have opened my mouth to the Lord. I cannot take back my vow. But did God really say so? If you make a wrong vow, then you can come in front of the Lord through the sacrifice, through the offering, and just return it back to the Lord. So that, so here you can see that even though Jephthah, he listened to truth, he know the truth, but at the same time, he's not super familiar with the truth. So today I have, there's this thing, I made a vow, but later on I regret, I don't know how to solve it, and I start living in pain. So their families, Jephthah, he is a very heavily used vessel, leader, by the Lord, and he can make the zeal for the Lord in the issue of Gileadites. He loved God's word. He seek God. But in this thing, he did not understand God's heart. He made a mistake. And his daughter, because his daughter also feared God and also is very faithful to his to her father. So today, when his father make this foolish vow, she chose to sacrifice herself. And then she was she died unmarried. And later on, Jephthah only judged Israel for six years. It's such a huge pity. So dear families, as we're reading the story of Jephthah, we can see that he and Gideon, they are both mighty warrior, two mighty warrior, two judges that God had raised. But they all fell in terms of teaching their children. Gideon, he made an ephod, and that led his children to the end of destruction and death and murder. And eventually, he only have Jotham. And for Jephthah, he made a foolish vow, and whatever comes out from the door of my house to meet me, I will offer it as a burnt offering, and his daughter come meet him, and he regret it, but he don't know how to deal with it, and then so he still offer his daughter as a burnt offering, so his daughter died unmarried. You know, at that time, if a daughter uh, died unmarried is actually very shameful. So you can see these two fathers, if we don't learn to really understand God's word, to understand God's heart, we don't learn to learn truth, even though they can be used by God and bring a huge changes in Israel, they save Israelites from the hands of the enemies, but they bring huge pain to their family, to their descendants. This is something that we, as someone who serve God, we need to be very careful. As we are reading the book of Judges, we, we need to remember our serving at church, our pursuit of the truth, our zeal towards the Lord. We need to keep seeing God, to ask God, to know His words. So otherwise, the consequences that we can brought will be very horrible. Is that our children, they forsake God, they don't believe God. And even worse is that we can see some really faithful pastor, their children forsake God and even worship idol. It's a really huge pity. So this is a a warning to everyone who as a leader, especially we as brothers, we as fathers, we as pastors, how can we teach our brothers and sisters, teach our children, teach our descendants to fear the Lord, to seek God, and at the same time, we ourselves need to really have a clear understanding to truth and seek the truth. Through truth, we can understand the heart of the Abba Father, to understand the salvation that Jesus Christ fulfilled on the cross, to understand the work of the Holy Spirit in our life, very meticulously pruning and all, all the conviction transformation and in our life so that we can be sanctified and be called righteous. It's actually God's very meticulous work. So today, if we only know that, oh, once we uh, become a Christian, we come to church and we just start to serving, serving, serving. And today, when I encounter some difficulties, trouble during our serving, we are misunderstood by others. I, I spend all my effort, but no one give thanks to me. And then if I start to complain my family, start to have criticism and judgment, criticize my pastor in front of my children, and then just complain about this coworker, complain about this decision in the, at church, you thought that you are just having this grumbling, but actually we are leading our children into this despair of unfortunate. So when our flesh manifests ourselves, when we manifest our old self, only will that hurt our ministry, but it will also bring our children, our family into 
under the attack of the Satan. So we should burdle our tongue. So really spend time to learn the truth and spend time to bring our children to seek the Lord and fear God. So next in verse chapter 12, verse 1 to 7, this is through what happened in this sixth year when Jephthah was judge over Israel. So at that time, after they fight, fought back from the Ammonites, the Ephraimite, they come and complain again. Previously, they complain against Gideon, and now they are also complaining against Jephthah. These two mighty warriors, Ephraimites, they are always complaining. In the past, when they complain against Gideon, Gideon said, okay, fine, you guys are a lot of people, you guys are very honor, honorable. Previously, Joshua was with you, you are the best, it's my mistake, forget it. But now, now in front of Jephthah, Jephthah told them, I and my people had a great dispute with the Ammonites, and when I called you, you did not save me from their hands. And when I saw that you would not save me, I took my life in my hand and crossed over against the Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim, and the men of Gilead struck Ephraim. And in verse 5 and 6, they captured the fort of Jordan. And then they asked the people to say the word Shibboleth. And for Shibboleth, if for someone they cannot pronounce it clearly, they say a Sibboleth. Then so what is this talking about? So here, Shibboleth and Sibboleth, they both mean river in Hebrew. It means for them to cross over the river. So why do they capture the fort by the Jordan? It's, and they ask them, saying that, okay, if you want to cross the river, then pronounce the word river. If you pronounce river into Sibboleth, that means you are Ephraimite. And because you have this accent, so I will kill you. But if you pronounce it correctly, say Shibboleth, then that means you are from other tribe, then it's no problem. So here, the Ephraimites, they are very prideful. They are self-righteous. They rely on the fact that Joshua was also an Ephraimite. So they previously treated Gideon like this, and now they treat Jephthah the same way. But here you can also see that God used Jephthah to discipline Ephraimite. And so in this thing, Ephraimite, they were being killed by 42,000 people. So Ephraimite was a huge tribe. But now they was like 42,000 men were just killed. Uh, at once. So they lose so many people in such a short period of time. They're almost at the fringe of extinction. So today we also need to ask God to may you search my words, search any pride in me. Today in church, we also have some people who are like Ephraimites. They are relying on their ages, rely on their uh, authority. And but there are also some people that are like Gileadites. They are easily being triggered, easily offended. They have their flesh rule over themselves. And one, once these two groups of people fight against each other, then the entire church will become a huge chaos. So today we have people like Ephraimites at church. We also have people like uh, Gileadites. They are very unforgiving because they have this reason, they have this backup. Maybe they spend so much time, effort, they offer up their time and sacrifice for the church. How can you speak to me like this? And when these two groups of people fight, fight against each other, then eventually the church will just have division, division, division. So today the things happen in the book of Judges are also happening in God, in the body of Christ. And how much pain it will cause to God's heart. Today the Gileadites they killed the Ephraimites. Do you think the heart of the Abba Father will be happy about it? Of course not. So may the Lord also have mercy on us and really bless the God's body and church to have this unity. So next from verse 7, Jephthah judged Israel six years. Only for six years he is the, uh, the judges who judge for the shortest period of time. And afterwards there are three other judges. Ibzan judged Israel seven years, Elon judged Israel ten years, and Abdon judged Israel eight years. So actually, they are a pretty rich pe person. So here I talk about they have a lot of children, and they have many, many um, daughter-in-laws. It's actually saying that they are a very influential person at their places, but their influence are just very local. So today, these 11 judges don't think that they are recorded chronologically. No, but instead, they actually happen around the same time. These 11 judges happens around the same time at different places of Israel in different tribes. So today as we are reading these, you need to care about this. Today, God can raise up judges to rule over Israel, but we have to also know that when we are being raised up like judges, we know that it's God raised us up to be the best of the church. God's spirit is on us so that we have this ability to serve. We have this gift for serving. 
But today, we also need to deal with the issue in our life. Our old self has to be nailed on the cross. We need to always live under God's conviction. We need to learn the truth. We need to firmly be abide in God's truth and to learn to understand God's heart, know His will, and draw near to Jesus and draw near to Holy Spirit. Follow the guidance from the Holy Spirit so that the hurt Gideon brought to his family and the hurt Jephthah brought to his daughter. All these mistakes and pain will not happen on us. Through Judges chapter 11 and 12, we can see how Jephthah, through the, through, by relying on God, he step by step become the warrior of faith and was recorded in the book of Hebrew. But the sin that he made, the mistake, that pain he caused on his daughter, the lacking of his descendants, we also need to be careful. Today, every people who serve God, we need to be very careful. Careful. Not just the thing that we do can be have receive favor from the Lord and be blessed by God and give provision to people, but our own descendant, our children, we also want to make sure that they can live faithfully in front of God. Amen. <music> Dear families, we hope that you enjoy the Bible race as much as we do. If you are willing to volunteer to translate the original Chinese teaching into English or assist with video editing, please email service at 360sunrise.com. Thank you.